Hello everyone, and welcome to another Game Legend. This time we'll be doing a creepypasta entitled Super Mario World, with Mario in all caps. My family and I recently moved from our home to a rural part of Ohio. We all got settled in, and I had a whole room to myself. The room was large in size, and I could at least fit all my collectibles and games in there. As I was finishing up, my dad knocked on my door. He said that his bedroom's closet was full of video game material and that I'd probably find something interesting in there. I followed him into the room and saw what was to me a glimpse of heaven. A Super Nintendo Entertainment System and some games for it just lying out there collecting dust. I went through everything and found a copy of A Link to Past, Super Punch-Out, and Kirby Superstar. In the back of the closet, though, was a game cartridge that caught my eye. It was a blank cartridge that had the word Super Mario World over where the cartridge's title art should be. I thought this would be a great game to play since I've never played that entry in the series. I took the Super Nintendo and the games back to my room and connected it to the TV set. I decided to play the Super Mario World game first. I plugged the cartridge into the slot and started up the game. But the title screen was where it all started. The title words didn't appear in the cutscene and the gameplay was different. The background was a dark, ominous shade of red and Mario's eyes were red. The copyright Nintendo 1991 was gone too. I, looking for a logical answer, assumed that this was a hacked game cartridge and that the previous owner left it as a small gag. I pressed start and began playing. Soon the overworld screen was changed as well. The water was changed to a bloody shade of red and looked very realistic. The grass part of the map was a dry brown color, similar to dead grass, and the pathways you traveled on were gray. Still believing this was a prank, I laughed this off and enters Yoshi's house. When the screen faded black, I saw a horrific sight. On the ground was a corpse of a Yoshi. Its nose was ripped in half, and hyper-realistic blood came out from its blank white eyes. I stood shocked in this and horrified. Who could have done this to Yoshi? I hit the advice block and it said, These markings on Yoshi's body aren't those of a Koopa, but of a human's boots and fingers. I wonder who did this. I noticed again that Mario's eyes were red, which was still odd. Freaked out by this horrid joke, I turned off the console and the TV, and I went downstairs to get a snack and relax. When I came back upstairs a while later, I saw that the console was turned on again and the TV was on. On the screen was yet another freaky sight. Corpses of Yoshi were laying around in front of Yoshi's house, some with their eyes missing, some with their heads decapitated, and one had his head sliced open with his brain all over the ground. I was disgusted by this scene. I pressed the power button on my, the Super Nintendo and pulled it out of the cartridge. I placed the cartridge in a small box, put it in the black in the back of my closet. I played a link to the past, and it didn't seem hacked whatsoever, thank goodness. I looked at the clock and saw that it was 10 p.m. I then turned off the console and went to bed. The next morning I got up and dressed for my first day at my new school. On the rather long bus ride to school, I looked out the window for most of the entire time. It was still dark out, so I couldn't really make stuff out clearly, but in the distance, I saw something rather creepy and familiar. What I saw in the distance, silhouetted by the moon, was what seemed like Mario staring at me. Where its eyes would have been were glowing dark red dots. It stared at me slowly for what felt like an eternity, but then I blinked and it disappeared. On the bus ride home from school, I looked out the window again, hoping to get a better view of the strange shadow. That is, if it even existed, but I didn't see it again. When I got home, I looked at the Super Nintendo and saw to my shock that the Super Mario World cartridge was in the slide. On the screen, in a vice block, it had above it the name Jeff. I was confused and creeped out all at once. I took it out and decided to ask the neighbors if they knew anything about it. I walked outside and I went to the neighbor's house and knocked on their door. I was greeted by a man about the age of 37, and he asked if I needed anything. I asked if he knew anything about someone named Jeff, who lived in my house before. The man's eyes grew wide at the mentioning of the name. He told me that about seven years ago, there was a young boy named Jeff who lived there. He was killed by a man who was once the town plumber. I thanked him for the information and left. I hurried home and grabbed the cartridge. I realized the connection. Jeff was killed by a plumber. Mario was a plumber. Is the boy's spirit trapped in this cartridge? I plugged it into the Super Nintendo and began playing to find out more. I returned to my save file, found it as I played through it a bit, but there wasn't anything else odd, but when I reached the first ghost house, I had a feeling I'd find something here. 
I entered the level in the cutscene of Mario entering the ghost house plate. As the door closed, I heard a bone-chilling laugh. This game surprised me, because I'd never heard of the boost sounding like that before. Once the cutscene ended, I realized there was no music and oddly, no booze. I ran through the first part and found no ghosts whatsoever. Suddenly, I saw a truly heart-stopping sight. The screen suddenly changed to a pixelated picture of a mutilated child's body. Above the photograph were the words, What are you running from? I recognized this phrase immediately. This is used in the old Game Boy Camera game when you chose Run in this one level. The screen was then changed back to the game, and I saw Mario, another dead Yoshi. Its head was bent at an odd angle and blood came out of its open mouth. I saw that near the bottom part of Mario's hands were red. His eyes were also that blood red color again. Mario then turned to face the screen. His horrid eyes staring into mine. A text box appeared below him and the words, Your next, appeared. The game was talking to me. I got freaked out and I pressed the power button on the console. The game still played on the screen. The words, Be prepared, appeared on the previous words. Scared out of my wits, I took the cartridge out of the slot. If the evidence that Jeff was killed by a former plumber, it definitely was now. I placed the cartridge in a drawer in my room and locked it tightly. I slid the key into my pocket and I went downstairs for dinner. When I returned upstairs, I was happy to see that the cartridge wasn't in the Super Nintendo. I decided to relax and play some A Link to the Past till 10 o'clock. I didn't touch that game for a whole week couldn't stand to play it and relieve those horrid visuals, but every morning on the bus I kept seeing that horrific shadow staring at me with its evil red eyes. After a while I found myself looking at the locked box with the game inside. I eventually swallowed my fear and took out the game. I plugged it into the slot knowing I'm going to regret this and turned on the console. I skipped to the file section of the screen, clicked on the save file and began playing. I adhered to the first level starting point, which was odd since you couldn't start a level without reaching the map. I ran ahead and saw an advice block ahead. Preparing for the worst, I jumped and hit the advice block. The black text box appeared above the block in my horror. The words said, You shall soon know true horror. See you soon. I exited the advice block and I saw Mario laying on the ground, his head caved in and blood coming from his skull. I almost screamed at the sight and I turned off the console and yanked out the cartridge. I locked it in its box. I sat on my bed shocked at what I just saw. Later that night, before I went to bed, I made sure my windows were locked tightly and the blinds were down. I secured my door with its lock and felt a bit safe afterwards. I turned on the TV and played a funny movie to calm my nerves, which usually works when I'm scared like this. I must have fallen asleep for some time because the movie was over when I woke up. It was still night out and I could see the door was still locked and the windows were secured. I was just about to go to bed. I noticed at the foot of my bed, I saw something that still haunts me to this very day. I thought it was just my imagination at first. Something that wasn't real and couldn't do anything, but I knew that this was real. It stared at me, its red eyes glowing in the darkness of my room. It didn't blink. Its red eyes staring into mine. I could tell it knew I was scared, and I saw its mouth curl into a horrifying smile. I felt like my heart was beating out of my chest. The thing stared at me for what felt like an eternity. And what happened next almost made me scream. The thing spoke to me. Welcome to your living nightmare, it said. Its voice demonic and dark. You've brought this on yourself. Suddenly, it disappeared and reappeared almost instantly. Only closer now. You have nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. It kept moving closer and closer to me. I could feel like my heart was beating and was about to burst. Welcome to your living nightmare disappeared one last time and appeared right above me, hanging in midair, its eyes piercing right through me, chilling me to the bone. You only have one more day to live, it said its evil smile across its face. Better savor it. It then disappeared, and I didn't see it reappear. I almost let out a scream of terror once it left, but I held it back. I breathed heavily, taking in everything that had happened. I then got up and unlocked the box holding the cartridge. I stared at it and decided to do something that I should have done ages ago. I went to our garage and found my dad's hunting shotgun. I walked far into a field and placed the cartridge on the ground. I am the shotgun's barrel at the game and fired. The game shattered the plastic cartridge into pieces. I could have sworn that right before the round hit the cartridge, I heard the sound of a boy screaming in anger. I 
sighed, knowing that this horrible nightmare would end. I returned home and went back to bed, still creeped out but calmer than before. On the bus ride to school, I didn't see the shadow appear in the distance or anywhere. My room never felt like an evil and dark, but calm and relaxing. I never saw that creature from that night ever again. I haven't told anyone about this experience until now. It was tortured after to relieve this memory again to write this, but I felt that I should all tell you this. I still have found no evidence about Jeff and the killer plumber, but I intend to find out eventually. Right now, I just hope I'll never see that cursed creature at the foot of my bed again. Well, this was a pretty good creepypasta. It had its cliches, such as, um, finding the cartridge, uh, name scribbled on it, uh, blood. I think it was overdone a little bit with the blood, 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 hyper-realistic blood. Uh, it was a little bit gory, but I thought that added to the creepypasta. Most creep- what I like about it, most creepypastas completely screwed up when they're talking about, uh, the player and the, uh, pasta actually interacting together. But this one managed to do it correctly, and it didn't get so much interaction as in it actually came out and killed the player, which would have killed the re realism. Not saying that the, uh, Shadow Mario didn't, but it's a little bit better than that. I felt like it dropped off kind of at the end. It just, um, yeah, I just don't feel like there was much, you know, if, you, if you've if been to school, they call it falling action. Uh, just hit that, and it was like, whoosh, down, but I thought it was a good creepypasta. Um, I can't think of a lot that I'd change about it, but the biggest problem I have is that he says that he'd never played Super Mario World. That's like an obvious lie, because... If you haven't played Super Mario World, you have no life. It's a fact. Check it out. It's the best Mario game. If you haven't played it, you do not have a life. In case you can't tell from my channel, that game is very near and dear to my heart. So, <laughs> uh, tell me what you think you change about this creepypasta to make it better. And give me your rating. I give it an 8.5 out of 10. And links will be in the description. And remember, it's just a legend. Right? A game legend.